Federico del Campo was a Peruvian artist who specialized in painting realistic and luminous view of Venice. He worked during the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. His works are a magnificent tribute to the great architecture and rich history of Venice. He combined great technical accuracy in rendering the Venetian architecture with light brush strokes to capture Venice's daily life and unique atmospheric setting. Most of his work show the Venetian palaces, churches and canals, but he has also painted some other scenes, including some views of the island of Capri, which was just like Venice, a popular place among artists. His work stands out from that of his colleagues by his attention to detail and the glazing waters, making his scenes come alive. In this video, I will discuss his life and work in some detail. I actually wrote a book about Del Campo. It is the first book ever about his art and it contains all known artworks that he painted during his life. You can find more information about the book in the description box below this video. Manuel Federico del Campo was born in Lima, Peru on October 17, 1837. He grew up in a fairly ordinary middle class circumstances in Lima and first became a small business owner. But art was his passion and he was able to attend the local academy of painting and drawing ran by the Italian born painter Leonardo Barbieri. Del Campo's artistic ambitions got a boost when he attracted the interest of the Peruvian minister Marquis de la Fuerte. Together with a wealthy Peruvian businessman who had studied in Madrid, they arranged for Del Campo to attend the Royal Academy of Fine Arts of San Fernando in Madrid. After a decade of travels between Europe and Peru, he finally ended up in Venice, which would be the main inspiration for his art. The first painting that can be attributed with certainty to Del Campo is from 1874, entitled Tintoretto's House, Venice. He was 37 years old at the moment. He had gotten inspired by the Impressionist movement which loved to paint outside and their focus on capturing natural light. Here are some more paintings from Venice from early in his career. And while the large majority of his works are showing the beauty of Venice, he did travel a bit across Italy at this time. He particularly spent some time at Naples and the island of Capri, just south of the coast of Naples. During the 1880s, Del Campo repeatedly captured this island's unique views. But he also painted the occasional work at Palermo, a busy thoroughfare Palermo, Sicily, and Rome street scene in Rome and walk around Rome. The work of Del Campo falls under the genre of vedute, which is Italian for views. The vedute became popular during the periods of the Grand Tour, when wealthy foreigners traveled to Italy to admire its classical site, picturesque vistas, unique atmosphere and architectural splendor. This team had a long tradition in Italy with famous artists like Canaletto and Guardi. And compared to their works, Del Campo's vedute are more detailed and he paid special attention to the unique atmospheric effects that Venice had to offer. Del Campo was part of a successful community of mostly foreign artists capturing the beauty of Venice. Among them was also the Czech-born artist Antonietta Brandeis, about whom I also wrote a book, and there is another video on this channel about her work if you're interested. One element that sets the work of Del Campo apart from his colleagues are his shimmering water surfaces applied by a glazing technique. Del Campo's work ranged from the main touristic highlights of Venice to impressions of the Venetian backwaters devoid of tourists. So each international visitor of Venice could pick some view or memory that they liked. Let me take you on a little tour of Venice 
through the paintings of Del Campo. Arguably, the most important touristic spot in Venice is St. Mark's Square, with the presence of Venice's two most important buildings, St. Mark's Basilica and the Deutsches Palace. One of the favorite views among Del Campo's clients was the view of the main facade of the Deutsches Palace, all of them with the Santa Maria della Salute church in the distance. More than once, we can observe the daily activities of the Venetians in the foreground, with people unloading fruits, flowers and vegetables from their gondolas or just taking a break from their work. Del Campo not only captured the outer facades of these famous buildings, he also painted the courtyard of the Palazzo Ducale with one of the domes of St. Mark's Basilica in the background, as well as a pigeon feeding scene in front of the Porta della Carta connecting St. Mark's Basilica with the Deutsches Palace. And on the back of the Deutsches Palace is the famous Bridge of Sighs connecting the government building of Venice with the prison. A somewhat less iconic spot among tourists, but one that Del Campo loved to paint is the view of the Fondamente della Zatere, a large promenade along the Giudecca Canal. This place was initially built as a dock in the early 16th century. By the time Del Campo painted the Zatere, there were still some larger boats loading and unloading along this promenade, though it was also a popular spot to hang out for locals. The Grand Canal is the most important canal in Venice, snaking through the city like an inverted S-shape. Del Campo captured several unique views of the Grand Canal and the buildings along it, but none was more popular than the view from the Ponte dell'Accademia, in the direction of the Santa Maria della Salute church. Del Campo painted most works with oil paint, but occasionally he captured a version in watercolor as you can see here. And then, there are many of Venice's beautiful palazzos that Del Campo captured, like the Palazzo Labia, at the junction of the Canareggio Canal and the Grand Canal, and the Cadoro, which is situated along the Grand Canal, the 15th century Palazzo Soranzo, Van Axel, the Palazzo Rocca Contarina Corfu, and many others. But not everybody wanted a memory of a famous building. Some preferred a quieter view of Venice, captured in one of its many backwaters. And while I show you some of those views, it is good to know that the works by Del Campo are not really part of museum collections. Among the almost 200 works that I included in my book, only 4 works are part of museum collections. And it makes some sense. These views were mostly bought by international tourists who wanted a lasting memory from their trip to Venice. So, they did not give their personal memories to museums. Well, I hope you enjoyed this overview of the work and life of Federico del Campo. In the description box below, you find a link with more information about my book, which contains much more information and images than shown here. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more art videos every week. Thanks for watching.